I am using my I'm using my new microphone tonight. <clears throat> Hope this is working. Because I've I've used it to talk to folk in uh, Zimbabwe, Vietnam, and New Zealand, but um, I haven't actually tried it in a Facebook live video before. So I'm just going to come on and, and basically talk crap for however long this takes. Um, you, you can. I'm just sitting in a house enjoying the lockdown, like like everybody else, and uh, I got this this microphone with my Christmas money, and it, it's a pretty good uh, bit bit of gear. That anyway, um, I, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Um, I wanted to talk about earlier on. I was. Oh dear, Rick on. All right, Rick. Hey, evening. Um. <clears throat> no, I was on this website earlier on and it was asking what your favourite Led Zeppelin album is, Ken. That's a, a weird concept. Uh, people, I was wanting to know what your favourite hang is, Ken, if, you, if you've got a hang. Uh, what's your favourite one? What's your favourite Led Zeppelin album? Uh, leave it in the comments if you've got a favourite. Ken, I find it quite hard to pick. But, I had to put an answer down. And I decided that, that if I was at gunpoint, if somebody would point a gun at us and tell us, look, you need to pick your favourite Led Zeppelin album, then I would pick Led Zeppelin 3. Um, I don't know why I came to that conclusion, but I had to pick something down. Or oh, Rick's picked uh, the untitled fourth album. And oh, there's Colin on as well. He's picked remasters as another good pick. Um, what about... The, is that the, the, the two disc one or the, the six disc, uh, well, six, six records, like four CDs? But hey, you kind of go down with that one, uh, remasters. Uh, I was thinking about picking physical graffiti because it's got a, a um, what would you say, a special place. Because that, that was what we used to, I was listening to when we went to Arm back in the day when you would just take a a, kind of like a double tape deck ghetto blaster and you would have to carry tapes and you would have to really carefully think about what tapes you were carrying and physical graffiti was I was in one of the tapes and usually their tapes would be the cult's pure cult album and um, uh, Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon and Wish we were here, Ken, like on a C90 on either side of oh, the two discs. Excellent. Good pick. Ah, I've got nothing wrong with that. But, Ken, it's amazing the, the, the miniaturisation of technology these days. Back in the day, you would have to carry like a, a double tape deck with the batteries, Ken. Take the, Ken, the big batteries, whatever they are, the D, D cell batteries. And three tapes, can and and even now you can shrink down tents as well. So you could carry can you could probably carry all that stuff yourself. Whereas back in the day it would take like a bunch of boys to carry. I remember we'd uh we'd uh, can uh, talking about my pal Scott that, that died back in November there. We used to get a line of his feathers Volkswagen. It was like. Volkswagen van and we would use that as a tent it was brilliant you could stand up in it and everything and you would lie there at night Ken you'd be you'd be all day drinking beer and Ken back in the day when I used to drink when I when I was a young boy and I haven't touched the stuff since I was about 25 well maybe one and a half but no no a regular drinker doing the pub and after you'd been hard on all day you would lie there and, and I would die was what he put on Again, kind of it was a tape of physical graffiti, so it would be side two, starting off with in the light, and you would be sleeping before it can, uh, the end of the song, probably. So it kind of was just that way. It was hard to pick between physical graffiti and, again, and, and the more actually. Again, you, you can't. Well, yeah, I don't think you can discount any of them. Although my, my pal Gordon, is, uh, he's. he's He's all tapped out on in through the outdoor encoder because I think he had day two and his, his CD changes in the car 
and I was running at his bit one night when we was able to came when we used to be able to run four houses and that. And I was sitting at the back and came with I enjoyed Led Zeppelin for a kind thirty year old year. And I says, What one do you want me to pull one? And he says, Pull one whatever one you want, as long as it's no and through the outdoor or colder. Ken, it is pretty good. So, um, Ken, what do you do during the lockdown? How, how do you entertain yourself? Ken, I, I'm not a big one for watching the telly. I, I don't really follow a lot of the telly that's been on it, although I did watch quite a good thing last week on Netflix about the the Yorkshire Ripper. If you get a chance, you should watch that. It's like a four-pair thing. Uh, somebody tell me to watch it, Ken. I'm not a big fan of... Uh, what do what, you call it? Um... Can I mod there's no really that much in it that that can keep me absorbed. Can I like logical stories and a lot of these things nowadays everything just happens dead fast and it, it all happens can there's no explanation for can things just happen. Can that does my nothing. So I can't really watch that, but I watched this you watched a ripper thing because it was kinda of factual thing. And the Wayne says, Oh, we started watching that but it was it was a bit slow and boring. But they made her watched it. Uh, I, I don't think they go it, Ken, because they don't mention Peter Sutcliffe in it for a bit, about the first, Ken, probably about halfway through it, the third episode, but Ken, but I think that's just because, Ken, they, they don't remember. I remember when it was, Ken, I must have been, what, five, six, seven year old, and I can remember even the women up here being terrified for the Yorkshire Ripper, Ken, it was a big deal. So it was good to sit and watch that. So if you get a chance, you can sit and watch that because it's, I think it's four 50 minutes episode. So it's like three hours and 20 minutes. So if you do it, uh, well, I've done it over the course of two sittings. Kind of watched two episodes and then I went out a walk with the dog. And then when I come back, I get tore back into it. So I watched it on the one night, just like a big film. It, it, was, it was quite interesting, if you like Dakin kind of things. Um, <clears throat> ten, ten, ten to like my, my classic cinema. Um, can just just like the just like the music you get, uh, the the seventies seventies cinema is the place to be. As I was think, like in the sixties, it was the young folk that were setting up the arts, and by the time you go to the seventies, there was just an expansive nature. Can Amongst all the arts, can we talk about the the music and and the the filmmaking and all that kind of stuff? And bef before the bean counters got involved, before folks started to try to make money, out art, so it meant you get hundreds of brilliant films about things that you would never ever get these days. Can things that folk wouldn't be interested in these days? So I I was sitting there day there watching. Uh, the Boys from Brazil, which is a, a pretty good film, directed by Franklin J. Schaffner, uh, also directed Planet of the Apes, but it's got, um, oh, what's his name now? Gregory Peck, who was also in The Omen, playing uh, Joseph Mengele, trying to clone, uh, say something, 90-year-old clones of Hitler, and uh, Lawrence Olivier is uh, the Jew hunter, that that try uh, that eventually foils him, but that's a good film. You should watch that. Ken, uh, uh, when it come out in the Ken late seventies, there was probably still folk kicking about that could remember the Second World War, and this would be. Ken, it would be it would be a a big deal. Ken, folk thinking, geez, oh, what if they brought back Ken? I don't even know if I can say that. Well, they'll probably get this, this video get banned because I'm talking about that because. Uh, if you put any kind of what, what's the uh, iconography, I'd even mention the the word uh, the the German party for the nineteen thirties that started the Second World War, then you can get kicked off. I can I should know I've been banned hundreds of times. Um, so again, if you're looking for a film to watch, that's a pretty good one. Uh, what else have I been watching this week? Uh, Dustin Hoffman. And Marathon Man, which is another good 70s film. 
Uh, it's a good. Um, what's it going to be called? A thriller. It's got uh, Roy Scheider. It was also in Jaws in it, and Lawrence Olivier, again. brilliant. And I, I've got this big box of Clint Eastwood films to make my way through, which will, will keep me going for. Well, I don't know. I suppose you could you could watch them all in a day, but again, that would be pretty self indulgent. Although Helen would do that. Helen would sit and watch uh, umpteen films in one day. So. Um, I don't know what the audio's like on this, I'll really like play it when I play it back. Um, <clears throat> oh, if, if you're... There's going to be more announcements tomorrow, and they're already telling you that if you if you go shopping to go yourself, but if you, if you go down to Asda and you're in there yourself, then get yourself round to the, the beans uh, aisle, Ken. Beans and what else do they keep in that soup? Uh, drink sauce and that. But if you get down there, they're selling Heinz curried beans for 10 bob. Again, I wouldn't pay a pound for them, but I would pay again 10 bob because I do enjoy, see, like a sausage roll with like a, a tin of curried beans poured on top of it or a pie. Not so much chips, I wouldn't have chips. So again, I'd, I'd keep my chips. Away from my beans, I'm not into that kind of thing. I wouldn't have a fried egg with, with chips or beans. Although I do can folk that they enjoy that, I wouldn't have fried egg chips. And where's the meat? You know what I mean? Where's the meat? There's nine. But I was doing it, I was again talking about going Mesties and, and getting the, the good stuff. I was doing it at uh, Farm Foods there, did you? And I, I got a bottle of this. It's Bars, uh, bars Bubble Gum Aid. It says a pound on it, but it's no they're selling it for sixty nine pi sixty nine pence. <coughs> and when I when I went to check out, uh kinda of, woman at the checkout kinda of, bit of blood on that and Ken she's scanning everything through and she scans through my bubble gum aid. And she's like, oh, You don't like that, do you? Oh, I don't like that, it's stinking. Ken, it's too sweet. And I was like, ah, do you like it? Can nobody else in here likes it? That's, that's why I buy it, because then when I buy it, I drink it all myself, can. I do that with root beer tea and a couple of other things that I buy. That, can, I'm pretty sure the other folk do that as well, can. Somebody in here buys beetroot because they want to offer themselves. Because I'm not going to eat it. But only who? Uh, the the bubblegum juice. I like it. It's pretty good. I've got bubblegum ice cream as well. I could make like, a bubblegum ice drink out of the two of them. But I'm not going to bother. I think there's somebody messaging us. Yeah, it's, it probably because of the Ken. I'm on the, I'm on the live video. Who is that? There must be Ken. There must be somebody watching this. Surely listening to me talking crap about bubble gum juice. But um, well, I was watching that as well. It's a Steven Seagal film. I put that one there there for hell. She's trying to watch this weird cat. It's a uh, fire down under. Because Helen loves a Steven Seagal. Uh, that that's why she made it me because I I look like Steven Seagal, but um, that one's pretty good. He's a he works for the FBI, and he he goes and tries to stop these folk dumping toxic waste, doing a like a coal mine. Again, it's a bit far fetched, and it's for the mid nineties. He's he's starting to get that big face that he's got kind of uh, painted on hair. Ken, he's, he has completely painted it on now, but back in the day, he was just starting to paint it on. But Ken, that's worth a watch, you know, Ken, if you want to get hard of that. Uh, Ken, what Steven Seagal was like, but he, he tells a lot of lies. Ken, he calls himself sensei, and I, I don't think he's got any legit um, mixed martial arts or uh, Ken, whatever, any real fighting pedigree. I think he just made it all up. I think he's a flim flam man. I think he went to Hollywood and just spun somebody a load of rubbish. And they kind of believed it and they gave him a, a job as a, I don't know, would you, can, would you call him an actor? I don't know. Get a kind of actor. Oh, there's the dog back. Oh, you back? Come on in. Uh, you come up here. No, you know, come up here. You go up there. Up there. You go up and lie on the seat. Come up, up there. 
Go, go, go. You're, you're in the middle and broadcasting. So uh, the dog's come back there. Oh, he's buggered off again. I've just shut the door and he's opened it again. He doesn't like shut doors, that dog. Hey, come on in. Come on, too cold. Can't leave the door open. Silly boy. <sighs> so anyway, I'm going, I'm going to bugger off because it's... Uh, for them that's watching for the, the tap end of Salkits, just remember the night's blue bin night and mine's is still full. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clear all the kind of cardboard and that. Still, still got hours left for Christmas. Again, I don't know why stuff comes with so much packaging on it these days. Again, it's, uh, it's maybe something that we need a new philosophy on but I've not really thought it out but I've not thought it thought out at all because I've just thought it in new there but maybe a way of how we could cut down on the can maybe day with job, jobs at the, the cardboard industry right enough so can I would maybe end up getting brick bats for that but if we could just find a way to cut down on the cardboard it, if only for the reason that my blue bin, can, although they only lift it every three weeks, my blue bins, I was full. Can, uh, and it, it's everything from for egg cartons to can, boxes, uh, Amazon things come from. Can, I'm, I'm quite glad now that, that the veins have grown up because come Christmas time, they, they would always get things like Barbies and stuff. And... Again, I, I don't know, maybe you've you've never had to put toys together for real asses, but when you, when you get these Barbie doll things, I don't know, maybe back in the day there was a bunch of folk going in and, and nicking them or something, but they, they put these things in, in their packaging, and it, it, you, you want to see how hard it is to get them out. Again, the, the wains are sitting there on Christmas Day, they've unwrapped her. Their Christmas presents, Ken, they're wrapping papers and like, Dad, Dad, oh, I've been waiting for ages for this. Can you get this Barbie doll out for me? Ken, you're sitting there like, no, I can't he? because they've, Ken, they've put this plastic stuff around the hair and everything to keep it in and this stuff to twi twist and hangs in so you have to twist them to get them out. It, it, Ken, it can be quite frustrating. You know what I mean? Quinny, come on, man, it's freezing. Stop opening that door. You coming in? Come on, you go up there and lie down there. You go up there, lie down there, lip licking, yawning, you yawn at your dad. Right, when you go then, out, 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 get out. Right, here, come on. Right, come in, come on, here. In, in. What? I'm trying to talk into this microphone. Right, you go on. Up, up, up. Yeah, good boy. You stay there. It's only the dog. It, it, oh, it is away again. Um, I don't know, communication device where you could, you could communicate with animals. Well, you can't communicate with animals, the new, you know what I mean? But again, some kind of communication device that was a two-way device where the animal can understand exactly what you're telling them and you can understand exactly what the animal's telling you can i can kind of understand some of the things he tells you the new can if there's a lot of lip licking or yawning and all that going on then it means he's he's no happy about things can whereas if the tail's wagging and that can the lugs are up and you know can he's he's exactly but can if you could actually converse with an animal can we all be your own probably simple terms can no using big massive words because again i'm pretty sure a dog probably wouldn't have that big of a vocabulary can we not necessarily a dog can if you want to talk to a horse or a duck then can who knows can who knows what could be possible um but can these are just can just some of the things that i would spend uh a wee bit of time thinking about Ken, maybe no thinking about that much, maybe Ken, if I thought about them a bit more, maybe, maybe some of them would be silly ideas, but Ken, sometimes you think of things and and they can just be a 
um, they could be quite quite useful to humanity and again animals again imagine if an animal could tell you exactly can if a dog come up to you and instead of making a noise like a washing machine and going <laughs> if a dog could just come up and say look do you want to open the back door and go and be seek again like a like a person would would say you can know that often but i've had it before can no can you open the back door and go and be well aye i've had to open the back door a couple of times for somebody to be seek but again usually as the room day in the shatter and you go and be seek again then they go in and they seek in your bath you know what I mean, Ken? What's wrong with the toilet pan? And so, Ken, once they're seeking the bath, you need to put your finger in and, Ken, down the plug hole in order to get the, uh, the bowl coat, Ken. But I'll leave you with that thought. I'm, I'm just going to ring off the new I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, and then, Ken, it's a bit chanking out there. I'll need to get prepared to go and put this blue bin out. Um, probably have to do that thing, Ken, where you're sitting, you can put your ass in it and ju jump up and down, sorry about the swearing, you can jump up and down, try and get the cardboard down, because I've still, I've got hunters there, I've tapped the stair, you know what I mean, and uh, Ken, it's fr quite frustrating, I, I don't want to spend, Ken, an hour, an hour and a half, sitting in that queue, out at bog side, waiting to get into the dump, Ken, who wants to do that, nobody wants to do that, so I'm not doing that, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to can stagger the rubbish. Our the can but it's, it's hard because it, it, they only bring you. Can you, you only get a wheelie bin collection once every three weeks? You know what I mean? Can you blue bin three weeks? Can grey bin, which is quite hard in our house because we we have a lot of rabbit shite to to send away. Can and can the rude gills rabbits? So sometimes I've seen me flinging a couple of bags of shite in the back of the car and driving up to Ur Gale's house. And Ken, she's usually no one, and she, she stays not a cul-de-sac. So our neighbours will see this guy getting out of the car, but Ken, they don't know what's ba bags of shit, Ken. It's, but Ken, they could be in there. What? Are you talking about bags of shite for? What? I'm talking about the Ur excess rabbit shite problem. Yeah, well, that's... Well, Ken, I just, well, I'm, I'm no passing any blame around. I'm no blaming anybody for anything. Yeah. Absolutely not. So I'm going to go with um, a day as the of you, Ken. As the day, there's quite good range of uh, uh, the, the rain sausages, but they, they've cut down a lot of the flavours because they were doing Monterey Jack and Jalapeno ones, but they've gone. And I think there's another couple of kinds of them. But the They've gone, so but you can still get the triple chili ones, which I quite like, and a toasty, with with cheese. So I had them earlier on, but Ken, don't be buying them all, cause then I'll go down and get some and they'll be gone. Ken, the curried beans are away, the the triple chili links are away, and the the bubble gum juice are away. Ken, it's all my own fault because I come on here and smartened everybody up and helped them where the bargains are. So, uh, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow with restrictions, probably I can foresee a curfew. I really I really think they're going to bring a curfew in here, Ken. Uh, why no? Ken, there's a, a thousand people a day dying currently, and you've still got folk going saying, oh, uh, uh, we, should, we should just get on with it and, and open, open the pubs back up, Ken. I don't know if that's a good idea. Can I think we've got more folk dying in this country a day the new than I think they had in Spain at, at the peak. Can a, th a thousand a thousand people a day? Can how many people do you know? Can a hunter, two hunter, and there's a thousand people dying a day. Can how many folks die in your town? Can twenty thousand? That's twenty days. Everybody in your town would be dead. So, Ken, whatever restrictions they bring in, fair enough. Ken, uh, nobody, nobody died of boredom. Ken, you can't sit in the house. And, Ken, uh, there's plenty there today. Ken, a lot of folk. If I can stay in the house, then anybody can. Ken, because nobody likes being outside more than me. But I need to stay in the house. 
So, can whatever restrictions are, then, then bring it on. Can I can handle it. Uh, remember back in May when they were talking about lockdown fatigue. Can lol, lol. <coughs> well, I need to say lol. I should actually go. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm, I've been I've been on here talking for like twenty five minutes, man. See, once I get started, uh, I'm I'm a wee on one, and and that's that. Uh, again, who, who knows, I might come on an air night and, and just sit there and talk pure rubbish and be a, a, an alternative to the to whatever the, the mainstream entertainment is, Ken, on the telly. Ken, I'll come on and you, you can, who knows where we'll go the next time. If, if I day come on this again, Ken, it might not work. I could be busy doing something else, Ken. Don't know what that would be. But Ken, there's, there's a lot of things I could be doing now. Uh, I could be polishing my boots, you know what I mean? I could be doing a big iron, you get what I mean? I could be just standing there, opening and shutting the blinds. Ken, I could do that. But we'll see, we'll find out, we'll find out in the future. Um, because there's a lot of it, you know what I mean? There's a lot of the future to come. There's not as much as there used to be. But there is a lot of it to come. You know what I'm saying? So anyhow, uh, I'm going to bugger off now. Uh, thank very much if you sat and watched. Again, if you managed the 25 minutes, then um, well done. Um, and thanks very much for watching. I'll see you after. Bye. Oh, it's not working. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to stay on.